Americans were also flexible in how they tried to spread particular ideas and values in South Korea. More often than not, sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse, Americans let Koreans come up with their own versions of modernization and their own ideas about democracy. They didn't try to force on South Korea a particular version of modernization. They didn't try to force on South Korea a particular version of democracy. Koreans adapted both of these concepts in ways that they thought were appropriate for their own society and in ways that could be re uh, reconciled most easily with their own uh, nationalistic uh, aspirations. Uh, and these types of policies in some ways had enduring benefits in South Korea and enduring benefits for the U.S.-South Korean relation, uh, relationship. It's only because uh, Americans gave Koreans leeways, uh, leeway in deciding the best forms of modernization and deciding the best forms of democratization that Koreans could become so attached to these concepts. It's the fact that Koreans were able to adapt them to their own interests and values. Uh, it's, 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 it's this fact that really enabled them to take hold. But as I've said, Americans also made mistakes in the process of nation building in South Korea. And these mistakes continue to exert a negative influence on American-South Korean relations and American-Korean relations. The biggest mistake was that the United States supported autocratic governments for too long and in some instances didn't do all that they could and should have to prevent uh, excesses on the parts of these autocratic governments. It would have been difficult for the United States to insist on full-fledged democracy in South Korea during the 1950s and 60s. But during the 1980s, the United States could have put much more pressure on South Korea for democratization. By that time, South Korea already had much of the institutional basis, much of the social basis, much of the economic basis that it needed for democracy. The U.S. support for Chun, however, uh, in, in particular, convinced many Koreans that Americans would tend to put their own interests before those of Korea, and this has created long-lasting suspicions of American power and long-lasting suspicions against American interventions of interventionism in South Korea that still find expression in some ways today. So thus, while the United States uh, in this process of nation building contributed in ways to South Korea's development and contributed to its democratization through the nation building process, it must remain aware that some of its policies also caused pain. Uh, in dealing with South Korea, it needs to be careful. Uh, it needs to be careful not to be too domineering. It needs to be careful uh, not to undertake policies uh, that, can re, uh, that can rekindle uh, lingering animosities against the United States and American foreign policy. What other relevance does this have for the world today, American foreign policy, uh, American nation building in South Korea? I think it's important. Uh, it's important because the United States, uh, again, for better or for worse, is once again involved in efforts to try to spread liberal capitalism to other parts of the world, just as during the 1950s and 1960s uh, it had been so deeply involved in trying to spread uh, liberal capitalism in South Korea. Can the United States replicate what it did in South Korea, in Afghanistan, in Iraq? Not necessarily. Uh, supporting conservative autocrats was generally viewed as acceptable during the Cold War by the American population and even by America's allies. Um, but today, doing so would be subject to much more persistent criticism and not be tolerated uh, in the international community. Americans also in the nation building process in South Korea were lucky in some ways. South Koreans were nationalistic but they had been colonized by an Eastern rather, by, rather than by a Western nation 
uh, during, the, uh, during the early 20th century. Because of this, South Koreans were willing and able to embrace and adapt Western political systems, Western economic systems, Western ideas uh, in ways that peoples in other parts of the world that had been colonized by uh, Western European nations could not. They saw democracy and they saw even free market capitalism as, alternative to ja as alternatives to Japanese colonialism. And this was important. Um, but I would argue that what the experience of American nation building in South Korea tells us first and foremost is that American power can at times play an enormous role, a powerful role, in shaping the destinies of different societies. But even while American power and American resources sometimes can play an extremely significant role in shaping the destinies of other societies, it can never completely determine it. Uh, if, the, if, the US, uh, if the US once again takes on nation building as it has, ultimately, the people who inhabit the regions that the United States focus on are going to have to decide how to respond to American ideals and values. They're going to have to choose their own destinies much as Koreans chose theirs. So I'll stop there and uh, I'll leave, uh, I'll throw the floor open to any questions that you might have.